Welcome to another video on Operations Management. In this video we will discuss the topic, Capacity Management which is an aspect of operations planning. Capacity management is an important topic to consider if an operations is to deliver its goods and services to the final consumer or meet demand. In this video, we will define what we mean by capacity and the methods used by organizations to manage their capacity when forecasting demand. So, what then is capacity management? Before we get into it, we will need to first define capacity. Capacity is defined as the maximum level of value-added activity over a period of time that the process can achieve under normal conditions. In other words, capacity is the maximum amount of demand an operation can handle under normal operating circumstances. This entire video will now discuss how capacity is managed within an operation. Capacity measures the rate that the operation can transform inputs into outputs or the quantity of a product or service that can be made within a given time period. Capacity is usually measured in convenient units such as liters, per hour, or per person. Take for example a bus company. Capacity will be measured by how many number of passengers can be carried in a normal circumstance in a bus. This will depend on the number of seats in a bus. Let's say the bus is a 56-seater bus. Then, under normal operating circumstances, the maximum capacity of the bus will be 56 passengers. When the bus is full, we say the bus is running at full capacity. When less passengers board the bus, we say the bus runs below capacity. When planning the capacity of operations, the operations manager must ensure that the operations performance objectives must be reflected in the way capacity is managed. In our previous video, we identified operations performance objectives to be cost, speed, quality, flexibility, and dependability. So how does managing capacity reflect these performance objectives? Costs. Underutilization of capacity may lead to high average costs of production. This should be avoided. Quality. Excessive fluctuations in the capacity might adversely affect the quality of products produced or services rendered. Speed. Responding to customers' demand as fast as possible might require building up inventory or providing surplus capacity to avoid queuing. Although, this might have cost implications. Dependability. Running the operations close to its maximum capacity makes it more difficult to respond to disruptions which might affect the dependability of the operations. And flexibility. Running surplus capacity makes flexibility of operations achievable in response to varied demand. However, this might also have cost implications. Managing capacity. To be able to manage capacity well, it is important to understand the nature and changes in demand. For example, the seasonality of demand. It is important to identify times whereby demand is high and the times when demand is low. After identifying the high and low periods, it is then possible to plan capacity accordingly. To be able to do this, forecasting is necessary. Forecasting demand must be as accurate as much as possible or else it will be impossible to plan the operation's capacity. If planning fails and the operations ends up with too much capacity, this will lead to high costs and waste. And if the operations ends up with too little capacity, this will bring about dissatisfied customers, hence loss of business. After forecasting and determining demand, measuring the operation's capacity is the next stage and this is measured under three main categories. These are design capacity, effective capacity, and actual capacity. So, how do we measure operations capacity using these three categories? Let's consider them one after the other. Design capacity. This is the maximum capacity of an operation which is determined in the planning stage. This type of capacity is the output that an operation can produce continuously, at maximum rate without stopping for any shift changeovers, breaks, maintenance, or any other delays. Measuring capacity this way is hardly realistic. Effective capacity. This measures capacity of an operation by taking into consideration stoppages, statutory breaks, timeframes, and normal working conditions. In other word, this is the capacity of the operations after accounting for planned losses. Actual capacity. This measures the capacity of an operation after accounting for planned and unplanned losses. These unplanned losses could include quality issues, stockouts, staff poor work rate or absenteeism and so on. Understanding capacity utilization is also important when planning capacity. 
Capacity utilization is the measure of how much of the available capacity is used. Utilization is output shown as a percentage of the design capacity. To determine the utilization rate of an operation, this is calculated by dividing actual capacity by design capacity. And to determine the efficiency of the operation's capacity, this is calculated by dividing actual capacity by effective capacity. Let us consider an example. A care agency. How does the care agency manage its capacity? Pause the video here to read through this case study. Now you should pick up a pen to make notes. Let's now highlight important points from this case study. First, we note that the care agency manages a team of 10 carers or employees. For these carers, the actual work hours for each of them per day is 7 hours over 5 days a week. When accounting for time off work due to illnesses, hours work per day reduces to 5.6 hours per day. We consider this as the planned loss. We already have the actual work hours or capacity for the team per week, which is 200 hours. The value of the actual capacity takes into account the planned and unplanned losses. But we don't have the design and effective hours or capacity for the team. We will need these to be able to calculate the utilization and efficiency rate of the care agency's capacity. You might need to rewind the video here to make note of the formulas for calculating capacity utilization and efficiency rates before proceeding. How then do we calculate the capacity utilization and efficiency rates? Here is the approach to get this done. We already have the value of the actual capacity which is 200 hours. Remember, this has already taken into account the planned and unplanned losses. However, we will need to calculate the design capacity and the effective capacity. Then use the actual output given which is 200 hours, to calculate the capacity utilization and efficiency. To calculate design capacity, we have to ignore any planned and unplanned losses. We are trying to calculate the maximum capacity or output possible here. So we need to multiply the number of carers, which is 10 by the maximum number of hours workable which is 7 hours, over 5 days per week. This will give us the value of the design capacity which is 350 hours. To calculate the care agency's effective capacity, taking into account the planned loss is needed. The planned loss here is the expect carers time off from work. This reduced the work per day to 5.6 hours. Hence, we calculate effective capacity by multiplying the number of carers, which is 10, by the number of the reduced hours per day, which is 5.6, and multiply this by 5 working days per week. This will give us the value of the effective capacity, which is 280 hours. So far, we now have the values of the three categories of capacity measurements. Design capacity is 350 hours, effective capacity is 280 hours, and actual capacity is 200 hours. With these values, we can now calculate the capacity utilization and efficiency rates for the care agency. To calculate the utilization rate of the care agency, we will need to divide the actual capacity by the design capacity. This will be 200 divided by 350, then multiply this by 100 to get the percentage. The utilization rate will be 57%. This implies that out of the intended 350 hours capacity, the agency is only able to use 57% of its capacity. But is this utilization rate efficient? Let's now calculate the efficiency rate. To do this, we will need to divide the actual capacity by the effective capacity and multiply this by 100 to get the efficiency rate. This will be 200 divided by 280, then multiplied by 100. The efficiency rate will be 71%. Although the agency is only using 57% of its capacity, the agency is 71% efficient in the way it manages its capacity. Let's now discuss a little more about capacity management. To be efficient, how then can capacity be managed? Capacity management refers to ways to cope with the mismatch between capacity and demand. There are three methods of coping with the mismatch of capacity and demand. These are Level Capacity Plan, Chase Demand Capacity Plan, and Demand Management. Level Capacity Plan. This is the traditional way to manage capacity. This method ignores demand fluctuations. 
It focuses more on producing efficiently and heavy inventorying and storing of finished goods. The downside to this approach is that during demand off peaks, there will be excess demand and low utilization rates and the opposite will occur during peak demand period, that is, deficit capacity. What you need to bear in mind for the level capacity management approach. Although demand fluctuates, as you can see here, the level of capacity is kept constant. Chase demand capacity management. This method of capacity management attempts to follow demand trends. In other words, it attempts to match capacity closely to the varying levels of demand. The operations increases or decreases capacity to match fluctuating demand. This approach requires considerable planning of the operations capacity. This might require training multi-skilled staff, managing variable employment contracts, using flexible machinery for production and so on. The key point to take away from the chase demand capacity method is that demand fluctuates the way it does, while the operations increases or decreases capacity to match these fluctuations. Demand Management Capacity Plan In this method, the strategy is to use short-term measures to manage fluctuations in demand instead of capacity. The operations managers here tries to bring demand closer to capacity as much as possible using demand adjustment techniques. Example of these techniques include using varying prices to enhance demand during off-peak periods and reduce demand during peak periods, using scheduled promotions or marketing during low demand periods, restricting customer access to the product or services during certain periods such as using reservations, and so on. The key point here is that capacity is kept constant and the operations manipulate demand so that it is at the same level with capacity. Similar to level capacity, here, capacity also does not change. It is now time to test what you have learned so far in an activity. Think of a case organization that uses either of these capacity management methods in their operations. This could be either level capacity, chase demand, or demand management. Try to justify your answer using what you have learned so far from this video and the explanation provided for these methods. You should also demonstrate an understanding of types of demand. Visit our previous videos if you have to. Pause the video at this point. So what have we learned so far in this video? Let's go through it all in bullet points. We first defined capacity. We defined it as the maximum output an operation is able to deliver under normal operating conditions. We also discussed that for an organization to be able to manage its capacity, it is important for it to be able to forecast demand as accurately as possible. This allows an organization to avoid waste from excessive capacity and loss of business due to limited capacity. We also identified and discussed the three ways of measuring capacity within operations. Design, effective, and actual capacity were identified. Design capacity is the maximum output an operation is able to achieve. Effective capacity accounts for planned losses, while actual capacity accounts for both planned and unplanned losses. Finally, we identified the three main capacity management techniques. These are level, chase demand, and demand management. Where level capacity keeps capacity constant, leaving demand to fluctuate around it, chase demand tries to match capacity with demand fluctuations. As for demand management, capacity is kept unchanged, while the operations uses different short-term strategies to manipulate demand. That will be all for this video on capacity management. We hope you have learned a lot from this video. Are there any operations management concepts you like us to explain using our videos? Please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.